All right, we'll now get into the extraction or dumping of particular processes. So we've identified a number of processes earlier, and we know that PowerShell and Notepad.exe, those are pretty well known. There's a little bit more context around those probably, but the only one that we technically don't know about is the Atomic Service.exe. Now, in the event, for example, if this binary didn't exist on the disk anymore, this could now be our only hope to see what was going on by uh, investigating this binary, extracting and investigating this binary a little further. So the way to do that is we can now go back to uh, using volatility. And then we can see that up here, this was the atomic service uh, process. And we've been using PS3 in the past. But the next thing you've seen earlier that there's actually additional plugins. So Windows and then PS and we had list and scan. Now we don't need to scan, that's just going to take a while and uh, we're not looking for hidden processes at this point. So let's just do list, but then a dash H so we can see what we can do with it. And the reason why we need it is now it would technically show us a similar list as we got with the previously with the PS3, but now this functionality or this feature allows us to also define a specific PID. So just look at a single process and then also dump it. So this means extracting the process out of memory and then dump it into the directory that we are currently in. Let's check out the details again about the atomic service process. Now this means we have to type PID, then I have to go back and check out the process ID here. Again, this is for me, 6572. And then if I hit enter, so now we can see again, this is uh, kind of the information we have seen earlier. But one thing that we can now do is let's try to pivot off the parent ID. Let's see what this actually, where this process actually originated from. So we're going to type in, in my case, the parent ID is 624. So this one now showed that the parent process was actually services.exe. Now this is a Windows specific process and really the purpose for this is, and this makes a lot of sense now because it is a process that is responsible for creating background processes and services. So now this atomic service service.exe, if you remember from previous sessions, we have seen it um, as it relates to Windows services that ran in the background. Now having this being created by services.exe makes a lot of sense. So there's nothing further that we need to investigate in terms of the parent process. And now we want to see if we can learn more about the atomic service process itself. So we're going to go back to the previous PID, which for me was the atomic service PID for 6572 and then we can now do a dump so type in the process id for your atomic service and then dash dash dump when you do that we now want to extract the process and see if we can just triage that real quick uh, we won't perform any in-depth analysis but just triage it and see if there's anything that we can get out of it so now this process has finished so we can see Again, here is the information about this process. And then if we type in ls.l, we can see in this directory now, in the memory directory, we have the memory. And then now here is a new file, which is PID for the process ID. And then it's the process ID that we saw associated in my case with the atomic service. So hopefully that's the same for you. And then a that dot dump, so DMP, that just indicates that this was dumped from a memory file. So now we can go off and see if we can do anything with this file. Uh, as part of a forensic analyst, we, it would be useful if we could just extract some information that keeps our investigation going. So what we are looking for is any potentially any behavioral or tactical information that we could use. Now, first things is, of course, we can do something to see if this uh, process or this binary now contains anything around strings. So if there's any useful strings contained with it. So what we can do here is type strings and then PID and then autocomplete for, to this process. And if we hit enter, we now have extracted some of the strings and 
really this is actually not a lot usually those we would see a lot more strings on a, in a binary so the next thing one other thing that we have at our disposal is we can create a hash of this uh, binary because basically this is exactly the bit by bit version of what the executable looks like so for to do so we can do sha sum and then just point it to the pit then hit enter now we got a sha hash generated from this particular file let's see if we can look something up based on this hash now this is probably one of the ways where we can find something real quick if other people have reported it or seen it before so to do so there's a lot of different places out there some good threat intelligence uh, of course one of the favorite ones of mine is uh, virus total so we can just now paste in the hash and see if anything is in here now this is looking like there's also no matches found so in this case there's of course a couple more sources that we could check out but to keep this uh, at a minimum we can now say that we don't know exactly what this file is doing there's it has not been reported out there based on this particular hash at least now it is there's either the way where we can submit it maybe to a sandbox where we can then run it and see what it's doing based on the behavioral analysis or we could send it to a malware reverse engineer for static analysis to dissect the code the bits and the bytes and understand based on the assembly for example uh, what it's doing but for us as a forensic analyst this is where I would say we are kind of hitting a wall now because dissecting and investigating this particular binary would just take more time and is also a different skill set that we don't need to explore too much at this point all right so that being said I guess we can say now that the atomic service we went as far as we could we actually were able to successfully retrieve a sample that we can now pass down which is already pretty good success and something that we come across oftentimes in uh, real world investigations.